Hello everyone, my name is Mitchell and I have a brand new video for you guys today. I've created a short story and hope you guys like it. The new country. Cousin, I'm afraid of this new country, Nicholas said in a wary way. Don't worry, it's not the same country you have once known. Things have changed greatly, but it's for the good, trust me. You'll see once we get off this godforsaken ship. I feel like a trapped mouse being in here for the past week. Jamal was keyed up to bring his cousin back to their homeland. Nicholas had moved away from their little town outside of Moscow, Russia named Jezbekistan. He moved there when he was he moved out when he was sixteen due to economic and educational problems he was facing. He had moved to Rio Gallegos in Argentina. They had the proper educational and economic support that he needed. Nicholas promised his mother before he moved away that he would get his PhD specifically focusing on brain surgery. Nicholas had achieved everything he had desired by the time he was 30 years old, and he knew he had to go back to Jezbekistan to meet his fa mother and father. What if they don't love me anymore for what I did, Nicholas stated. Jamal replies, nonsense. Every time I see your parents, they always ask if I know anything about you and how's, and how's your schooling going. Nicholas tells Jamal, that makes me feel really good, cousin. Thank you for that. Hey, Nikki, is that the land I see? I think I see the home country. Jamal was happy to see Jezbekistan. But Nicholas was sweating profusely when he saw ho when he saw land. He took a big whiff of the air, and countless memories of him as a child playing on the beach on his property began to surface. Gee whiz, Jamal, I don't feel good. Maybe we should catch the next boat back to Rio Gagales. I think I might have left the oven on or something. Jamal was vigorously grabbing Nicholas on the arm, on the shoulders, and expels. Nicky, bro, your old life is over in South America, okay? You can't keep thinking about what is going on and your, what you're missing or any, or any of that bullshit. You've left all that in Rio Gagayos. You are in Uzbekistan with the best job lined up for you that any brain surgeon would die to have. Am I right? Yes, Nicky barely lipped. Nicky, bud, I need to hear you. Nicholas says a bit louder. I said yes. Say it again, Sonny. You need to say it louder. I said hell yeah. Nicholas is yelling so loudly that other people in the boat started staring at him. That's what I like to hear, man. When the ship approaches the dock, Nicholas instantly noticed the metal dock that the head placed there. When he left, it was all wood. Hey, Jamal, when to put the new dock in? Jeez. It was been about 10 years since that new one was built. Nicholas was thinking to himself what else has changed around his town. He would know how to get around. Would he even know how to get around Uzbekistan? Would he even know what his own house looks like, or even what his parents looked like after 14 years? Nicholas began to sweat again. As the boat pulled into the dock and parked, Jamal took Nicholas to their rooms just to double check they had everything. As Nicholas was looking around, he noticed something was underneath his bed. He saw that it was his old house keys. A tear was starting to form before Jamal shouted, Nicky, friend, we need to go. Our Uber is waiting for us. Without hesitation, Nicholas inserted the keys in his pocket and followed Jamal. When he got off the boat, he noticed a par the parking lot pavement was a darker color than it would he remembered. Excuse me. Nicholas and Jamal got inside the Uber and began driving towards the other side of Uzbekistan, where Nicholas's parents' houses is. Nicholas was nervous to drive through downtown. He could be, he could see the city skyline from the main road near the, near the dock, and he noticed there was way more skyscrapers than what he remembered. 20 minutes into the ride, they were in the downtown part of Uzbekistan, and Nicholas noticed all the little shops that he had once grown up with have all disappeared and turned into something new. Even his favorite taco place that he went to his family on every Friday, Jay's Crazy Taco Place. When they were driving on the outskirts of Uzbekistan, Nicholas saw the place he was going to work at. It was a huge 15-story hospital building that was just erected five years ago. Seeing his workplace actually made him feel more calm. When the Uber pro pulled up to Nicholas's house, Nicholas started turning pale in the car. Nicky, cousin, you gotta get out of this car and go see your parents. Trust me, you want to see them. Oh, I don't know, Jamal. I'm worried what they're gonna say. Screw that, Nicky. You got this, man. Nicholas slowly opened the car door. The sunlight blinded him for a few seconds until he got his eyes adjusted. He slowly walked to the trunk to grab his belongings. Jamal grabbed his stuff and in a sarcastic way he presented Nicholas with his possessions. Here you go my lord, Jamal stated. Nicholas could tell he was trying to make fun of him and just make him feel better. He remembered when they were little and he would always do that to him when he was sad. 
It worked all the time, including this time. Nicholas chuckled and snatched his things. The boys closed the trunk and started walking up the driveway. Nicholas was breathing nice and steadily, making sure he was calm. Jamal led the way up to Nicholas's parents' house. You gotta knock on the door, Nikki. What? No way, man, you do it. Nikki, friend. I think you would like to see their I think they would like to see your face first. Ah, okay. Nicholas's Nicholas knocks on the door. The boys heard the door latch, unlock, and then the door opened up. And I gotta get at least 100 likes on this video for me to create a part two. Deuces!